Hello there, after last week's massive The War Within news, things have slowed down just a little bit this week. But don't worry, Blizzard still has plenty in store to keep us all busy with the announcement of the release timelines for Patch 1027. Patch 1027 is arriving on May the 7th for North America and May the 8th for Europe, with the much anticipated remix Mists of Pandaria aka Time Running feature launching the following week with a global release on the 16th of May. So let's look into what content is becoming available and when. With the launch of 1027 on the 7th or 8th, we get the Dark Harp storyline. This new quest line hasn't been tested, so we don't know much about it, but we're expecting a prologue quest line for The War Within, featuring many of the main characters that have been teased by Blizzard for the new expansion. We're also getting Draenei and Troll Heritage Armor, which will be obtained via new quest lines, and there's a new Night Elf quest line set in Belemeth. There's also a bunch of user interface updates with a new stable for hunters and an updated pre-made group finder with a bunch of new filters to make finding the group for you much easier. There's also a few new hairstyles for humans and blizzards are also removing the renown requirements for accessing the Dragonflight max level quest lines, meaning that those of you who never finished the renown will be able to catch up in the whole story. I'll put a link to the patch notes down below. On May the 16th, the new Remix Mists of Pandaria event will go live. If you've managed to miss the details in that so far, it's a new limited time event that allows you to level new characters all the way up to level 70 entirely within the Mists of Pandaria expansion. The leveling quest lines have been tweaked to use the new campaign icons. You'll get a legendary cloak that accumulates power and even an XP buff as you level up, reworked leveling gear, the ability to level up via raids and a ton of cool new cosmetic rewards including 32 mounts. For those of you who managed to fill all 60 of the currently available character slots, worry not, because this week Blizzard announced that with 10 to 7, we'll be getting an additional 5 character slots, taking us up to a total of 65, albeit the limit of 50 characters per server will still remain. While these slots are being added for Remix, as Remix takes place on the regular WoW servers, these extra slots are effectively just standard character slots, which you can use for either normal characters or for Remix characters. This coming Monday the 29th of April, I'll be releasing my preview of this event and taking a bit of a dive into how this might be showing us a possible future new levelling system. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already so that you'll get notified when that goes live. One thing that is a little bit strange to me is that Blizzard have decided to choose this event for a global release, mainly because we already know so much about it thanks to it being on the PTR for testing. The recent Plunderstorm event, which was kept a closely guarded secret by Blizzard right up until the last minute, would in my opinion have been a much better candidate for a global release. Instead of what happened there, where players outside of North America basically had all the details become available before we could even play it. It really feels to me like Blizzard's decision making about what does and does not get a global release is a bit back to front at the moment. Now there's currently no official word on how long this event will last, but on the War Within Alpha, testers have noticed a calendar entry for the Remix event which was set to run from May the 16th through to the August the 20th. Now it's worth pointing out that calendar dates in the test environment can, and in my experience, often do change before they go live, so that definitely isn't written in stone, but this could be giving us a bit of a clue about Blizzard's internal dates. Given the sheer number of rewards to collect, I for one would certainly welcome having three months for the event, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this turns out to be in the right ballpark. This date does also lend itself to another bit of interesting speculation. The most logical to me time for this event to end would be with the War Within pre-patch. So could this timing be pointing towards Blizzard having a probably tentative plan for the pre-patch to land in mid-August? As it happens, this is pretty close to my own personal speculation about when the War Within might land. If you're interested in that, I'll link to my original speculation video. As it happens, many of the dates I put in that video have turned out to be pretty close, with the exception of 1027, which is landing about a month earlier than I'd expected. 
With three patches tending to last about two to three weeks, my money is currently in a mid-September release date for The War Within, which is pretty much the earliest that would meet Blizzard's BlizzCon announcement, which was for a full fall release. But what do you think about the possibility of an August or September release? Is that earlier than you expected? Does it clash with the holidays? Let me know in the comments down below. Another bit of news from Blizzard this week that is a little bit more mixed, and that's the announcement that the World of Warcraft companion app is being retired with the launch of The War Within. Now, I personally have never really used the app very much. In the Warlords of Draenor through to Shadowlands era, the app mainly provided a means to interact with the mission tables, and I did find it super useful when I was working in the Legion class order mounts, which required sending out a bunch of missions in quick succession. Being able to do that when I was away from my PC did just shave a fair bit of time off of getting those mounts. But honestly, that's pretty much the only time I've used the app in anger. For Dragonflight, Blizzard did bring back Auction House access, which seemed to be like a good idea in paper, but honestly, I never used it. So overall, I'm not going to shed a tear over the app going away. But what about you? Do you use the app? Will you miss it? Comment down below. With the launch of Season 4 this week, we benefited from a sizable 39 item level jump from most gear sources, and the crafting system is no exception. The new Seasons 4 Sparks are now obtained from a weekly Last Hurrah quest that replaces the weekly Aiding the Accord quest in Voldraken. This awards a splintered spark, two of which can be combined into a full spark. For week 1, in addition to that, we can get a second splinter spark as a drop from doing content like PvP, Awakened Raids and Mythic Plus, meaning that we get a full spark for this week only. Blizzard have however confirmed that this is a one-off bonus and that in future weeks we'll be going back to being limited to a single splinter spark, meaning that we'll only get a full spark every two weeks. Now before I move away from the live game news, I do want to remind you about a bunch of upcoming events. First of all, we currently have Burning Crusade Time Walking, and this comes with our weekly quest that rewards a piece of champion level gear for completing Time Walking Dungeons which given it's the first week of a new season is likely to be useful to a lot more players than usual, as most folks will still have some Season 3 gear. As well as the dungeons, Burning Crusade also comes with the Black Temple Raid, which offers more opportunities for champion gear, and the quest reward from the raid also comes with a chance of getting the Ashes of Alarm Mount. Looking towards the near future, and we have Volunteer Guard Day on Sunday. This is a mini holiday where you can salute guards in major cities to gain a temporary guard outfit and you can also help your local guards fight off invaders. This gives you a stacking buff that can award some cool temporary titles. On Monday we see the start of Children's Week. This is a week long major holiday which does contribute to the what a long strange trip it's been achievement that awards the Violet Proto Drake. In fact, this event is probably the easiest one of the holidays to do for that achievement. If you haven't done it before, I do recommend giving it a look. It's quite a fun short little quest line. It's also a really good way to farm up any remaining progress for the trading post if you've been slacking in that this month. On Tuesday, we get the North Ren Cup and the continuation of the Dragon Ride races in the Old World Continents. I've been avoiding these events a lot so far, but this is the one I've been most looking forward to. Northrend is some of the most magical zones ever created in World of Warcraft, and I cannot wait to have a reason to visit the likes of Howling Feard or the Storm Peaks again. There have been a couple of new dragon riding outfits data mined, and my guess is that at least one will feature as a reward for this event. There's also a new pennant toy with a checkered flag, and I have a suspicion that may turn up too. The event will last for two weeks. Now this event was originally in the calendar to start much earlier in the month and I personally think the change to a later date is a bit odd as it now overlaps with Children's Week. Had the original date been maintained it would have much more nicely fitted into what was a bit of a gap in the calendar. On Wednesday we get the May trading post. Now at the time I recorded this video we don't yet have a preview of what's in it but my guess is that we can expect a continuation of the spring theme. I'm not a massive buyer from the post but I do still like to drop by and check it out especially when there's a mount in the inventory. So all in all we've actually got quite a busy little spell coming up over the next week in the in-game calendar. 
Over in Classic Season of Discovery, and we got the announcement of limited free character transfers from PvP to PvE realms. In their announcement, Blizzard explained that due to the enforcement of a more even faction balance on their PvP realms, some players have been finding the reality of living in a balanced PvP server to be a different experience to the one that they had hoped for and are perhaps regretting their choices. To support that, Blizzard are now allowing players to move to PvE realms on a limited basis, albeit this will only be allowed where it won't cause an imbalance on that server, meaning that transfers may be stopped and started at very short notice. So if you're someone who does want to make that move, I would suggest not delaying when it's available. Sadly, Blizzard also announced that the annual BlizzCon event will not take place this year. With the takeover by Microsoft at the end of last year and the job losses at the start of this year, I'd personally been harboring a lot of doubts about this event happening, so it didn't come as a huge surprise to me. The good news is that they did say that they do plan to bring it back in future. This doesn't mean that all will be quiet from Blizzard as they do have plans to attend industry events like Gamescon and they also announced they have plans to do multiple global in-person events to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Warcraft franchise. Moving over to PTR Watch, which is where I cover the interesting discoveries from the War Within Alpha, PTRs and data mining. Be warned that the rest of this video does come with mild spoilers. As always, I'm going to avoid story spoilers as much as possible, but if you want to be completely unspoiled, I suggest dropping off the video just now. One of the questions I had going into the war within was how likely it was that the focus on getting high level gear from professions would be carried forward. And based on data mining, it appears the answer is very likely indeed, as a new bunch of embellishments and sparks have been discovered in the alpha. And that's not the only element of gearing that appears to be carried forward, as a bunch of new currencies have been data mined, which includes what are likely to be the War Within versions of Catalyst Charges, Flightstones and Crests. It appears that the Crests are being renamed to become Harbinger Crests to match the theming of the new expansion. As always, this kind of thing does come with the caution that gearing is an area that Blizzard often changes around during the Alpha and Beta process. But given Blizzard had mentioned in interviews that the upgrade system would be carried forward, I do think it's fairly likely that Blizzard have decided to carry most of the gearing system forward in a form that will at least be broadly similar to what we've become used to. Given its success of the new gearing system, I for one think that this will be very welcome. Another Dragonflight favourite that's getting carried forward is the Dragon Riding races with a bunch of achievements for completing the races in the War Within Zones. Now these currently have placeholder text so we don't know a lot about the number of the races we'll get or indeed how they will be renamed given the move to calling the feature sky riding rather than dragon riding. Well that's all from the news this week. After last week's massive news dump this one has felt a little bit quiet even though it's actually anything but. If you found this video useful please let me know by hitting that like icon down below. And in case you've forgotten already, do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video goes live. Subscribing is by far the best way to support a channel like mine and have a load more news and opinions to come real soon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.